there is the car. We have bought a Mercedes GLA AMG, which we are super happy with. Never thought that we would ever buy such a car, but now we have it. As you all know, the car on the left corner has massive damage. So in this episode, we will continue repairing this car. Here I am sitting in our new car, the GLA AMG. As you can hear, it does start. But there's something huge going on. Without damage, we naturally would never have a GLA 5. Just for the content alone, it's a super cool car. And the driving experience takes it to the next level. As you know, the car is broken and that's already huge. It's risky to buy such a car. Of the original colors just look nice underneath, as you can see. Is the car wrapped? And I hope to just reach the outside of the distance too. Everything just black, found back without any filler spots and without any nonsense. Additionally, we're of course going to mount some new parts on the car as well. So we've got original parts. Bought headlights and there are many more parts coming in. I just want to start. Let's go. Well, we are 10 minutes further along, and that's how fast the process goes of removing your wrap. I find it going quite slowly, but the good news is, it looks like the hood has its original color, so I'm really happy about that. Stay seated, because we're far from done. Let's go. As you can see, we've got the hair dryer out again. This makes removing the wrap very easy, as I feel like I'm loosening the glue a bit, causing him to lose his attachment. We're working on the left rear side panel. And it's quite a process and takes a very long time. Like, I'm about an hour with one panel. So you can imagine, what you see here is roughly, this has been about three to four hours of work. As you can see, I'm totally done with the left rear door. I had to remove this trim for that. I also had to dismantle that door handle. And what a job that is, guys. To actually make an old wrap at all. And then you have to imagine how much work the rest of the car is. So it's so much... And there I really miscalculated. Really satisfying because you see results of your work super fast. I think its shine is also really nice, so let's just strip the car further. Yes, get as much done today as possible because all the wrap need to come off. All right, boys, it's a new day here, and I'm already up. It's about half past 11 now, so I've been busy for a few hours removing the last wrap that's still on the car. Unfortunately, the car is still covered in adhesive residue. It's even a bit uneven. I don't know how long the wrap was on, but it was really a huge task to get it all off. So before we can actually move on with anything else, I really want to remove the sticker residues from the car. I'll do that with something called tar and glue remover. And then... Then hopefully everything will be all set, and after that we can replace the spindle, which is bent in our case, and also a new ball joint has arrived for the steering gear, the inner steering box. We're replacing these too. The final result is slowly coming into view. New headlights to be installed. Yeah guys, this thing's gonna be super cool, let's go! I lifted the car up to give you a good look at what's actually bent. As you see here, this is our steering rod. And this ball. This doesn't belong here, it should just go straight. We also suspect that our spring is bent. And we're going to replace that. So, we're going to lower the car, detach the strut, loosen the ball joint, and once it's on its wheels, we'll finally wash it. As you can see in the footage, I've disassembled the inner tie rod. It's quite bent, that's really unprecedented. It took a major hit. Just take a look at what it looks like. Mark the spot with tape where the nut was located. Here I counted the turns of the nut. There were 24 in total. I'll give this 24 turns and then the ball can return to its original position. It can be reassembled. 
it's key to get it as close as possible to. On the old alignment, he must of course still be aligned. The car after you have replaced something like that. Yes, we are going to reassemble the part. We are going to see it like this. Let's go! I was able to borrow special spring clamps from the neighbor. That's this set and I'll use it to clamp the springs. As you know, the spring is under tension. You can't just detach it. So I'm going to take care of this. Then you can clamp the feathers and then you can shoot it from above and then you can cut everything off. Well, the shock absorber is reassembled. It wasn't very difficult task to replace him. It actually went quite smoothly, quite easily. You just have to pay close attention that the spring, the coil spring, comes back into the saucer in exactly the same position. So he actually, yes, achieving the same row height and that it really just fits right as it should. I think my brother was indeed right because the negative camber is completely gone now and it stands up nice and straight again. Like this side, and yes, it was indeed bent. I'm going to put the wheels on, and I'm going to install the headlight next because we've got new original headlights. Inside, I'm going to check that again. Assemble the car so we can see if the modules are good. I'm looking forward to driving it, and hopefully we can also remove our steering gear errors later on. Because our steering gear isn't working either, but there's a mistake somewhere, so maybe just dealing with the accident. And we just have to grab everything to be reset or turned in. <laughs> Let's go! I just placed the modules on the headlight. Unfortunately, I just found out that a corner is broken off here, so I can only fasten it with three screws. When you buy a headlight like that and you have it in your hands, you really think it's completely intact and whole. But in the end, when you mount these kinds of things, you find out there's another corner broken. What a waste. The module is properly in place. It's time to mount the headlights, and I'm very curious if they will turn on because yes, they've taken a big hit, and I just hope that our modules are still intact. We're going to install the headlights. We're giving the car back its eyes as they should be. And boy, a picture. As you know, we have a container for all the headplant builds. That way we keep everything together. Yep. This is not yet the final position where it will be placed. Eventually everything will be let out, like the bumper on it. We've already started the rebuild, guys. Unbelievable how fast things can move. Episode three, cars ready. Yes, they are very large. They're just small 20 inch rims. The moment is here guys. We're going to see if our headlights work. I hope so. I don't feel like spending more money on headlights, so let's see. Yes, I have Xenon on the left, and nothing on the right. Yes, right. Hey, I have dynamic turn signals. So cool. What a bummer, guys. Somehow we could have known it obviously wouldn't go right the first time. Headlights are always an issue with new model cars. I'd say let's hook up the diagnostic tool. See what error codes come out. We still don't know anything about this car, except that there's a Christmas tree lit up on our dashboard. So I'll grab the troubleshooting computer. Let's read it out. 
Of course, the well-known computer. I'm curious about the issues it will find, because Carly goes quite deep. It goes through all the car's modules and not just the engine management. 80% charge and already eight errors. Many technical issues may also be related to a dead battery or a weak battery. 71 mistakes and you lose. Yeah. So if everything is erased soon, we hope that the car actually maybe has lost about 80% of its malfunctions. And then what really remain are the true ovens, the real issues that are there. And then hopefully we can get started with that. And perhaps it'll solve some issues. Maybe our headlights will start working. Maybe the power steering will turn on. Because as you know, it's an electric steering system. And it's possible that the car got messed up from that hit or due to low battery voltage. Because it has to be relearned. It's complete. 11 errors have come back. I'm curious. Oh, that makes a difference. It's no longer very bad. Now it's just bad. The odd thing is the lighting at the back actually works. Do a blinker test. Yes, that works. Gone. The brake light is working. So your left indicator, it's working. Or, uh, sorry, right indicator. Yes, right indicator. It's not working either. In the mirror. So it does nothing at all. So yeah, I personally think it has something to do with that collision alert in the display. Because we also have no power steering. Hey, we can still check the fuses for a bit. The fuses were fine. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything there that could have triggered the collision alert. You really did your best to make that car shine from the outside, didn't you? I removed all the bits and pieces, so then it just goes back to the way it was. But in the wheel arches on the bottom, it's like you've been through the Sahara. We're going to jack up the car. We'll also give it a good scrub from the underside, wash it as well, because that's what such a car deserves. Let's go. I can't pretend I drive really well because I don't have handlebars and I have a flat tire on the back left. But okay, <laughs> he's never been this clean before. Checking the tire pressure seems logical with a flat tire. One thing we noticed is that it sounds insanely cool in sport mode. This thing definitely has a tune on it, no other way. He's definitely not stock anymore. As you know, he's got a downpipe, so the car might be chipped. I think you always combine that with each other, downpipe with the chip, because otherwise you wouldn't do that, I think. He sounds fat, but that's something we need to find out later when the car is really driving well because we have a flat tire. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. The hole is as big as his finger. And yes, we have indeed ordered tires, but they haven't arrived in time to actually do a test drive. And we still have the collision mode on, which we believe is why we unfortunately don't have power steering. And of course, all the malfunctions on the dashboard. Finally, it looks like an AMG when it's that dirty. I almost find it sad to see a car like that. We've already been through this, guys. The car has become so clean, hasn't it? Unbelievable. Now, just to check underneath, as if it's become brand new from the factory. This is definitely much better, but I'm going to dry a cloth there for a moment. I see. We should actually be quite happy with this already. Who details the bottom of their car these days? Yes, it's just day and night difference. Here we are, next to a clean AMG. Now that it's actually completely clean, we can take a walk around to actually show you all the damages. Because you know about the front end damage, but not about the rest of the damage. We also have a big dent in our door. Yes, not a big job for the sprayer, of course. Here we have another dent. It needs to be pulled out and fixed a bit. A little bumper. You guys obviously saw it during the design process. There was the Eurepri. Rear bumper. Also, the rims have quite a bit of damage all around and need to be powder coated again. 
but that's not our biggest concern. For us, it's important now that all parts are coming in, because we can come again, and we are incredibly happy with how the car turned out after we removed the wrap. This is actually just what we could dream of. No underlying damage here and there, some scratches, signs of use, but nothing strange. On the other hand, the headlights that still don't work. Possibilities. It's about the malfunction due to the collision inside. Let us know in the comments if you think you know what's wrong with our headlight. See you next week with a new video. We now know which parts we need more of. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Stay tuned and we'll see each other soon. Bye.